we'll start with Tom Dowd, BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Joe. Uh, Joe, I feel like you've gotten a version of this question a couple times over the last year, but just looking back on where this team was when you got here, um, how does it feel to go into training camp, not just with KD, KD and Kyrie now, but Harden and Millsap and, and Aldridge and all these guys? Any expectations that come with it? Yeah. Um, obviously, big difference from six years ago, you know, when you're just a young, really developing team. That's tr a lot of guys are trying to identify, figure out their identity here in the league and solidify niches for themselves. Um, but this is a point that every organization is trying to get to where you have this caliber of talent, these, you know, this level of expectation. So, you know, as, as much of it, the contrast that, that's there, this is the position that, um, you know, every single team in the league wants to get into. Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, for both of you, uh, only eight guys are returning from last year's roster, and now this is a much deeper team than it's been. A lot of good top-end players are, are coming in. Uh, how do you see your roles evolving uh, this year, given the depth of the supporting cast now? Uh, I think my role would probably stay the same. Um, uh, play a lot of defense, uh, still screening role when I need one, when I need to. Um, and then I've been working on my shot all summer, so hit down, knock down a few shots if I need to. Yeah, I'd say um, just with the added depth, I don't think that they'll be quite as top heavy with the minutes with certain guys. You know, obviously we're going to rely a lot on Kevin, Kai, and James, you know, uh, barring any setbacks, you know, health and otherwise. But for the rest of us, I think it'll be more of a collective uh, spread, which I think will be to the benefit for us too. Other questions for Joe or Bruce? Go to Gerard Hector, True Hoop. Hey, Bruce, when uh, James was in here, I asked him who gets to control the aux cord in the locker room for music. He said the young guys like you and Nick. So what's in the uh, rotation as you get ready for training camp in this season? Uh, maybe some little babies, some future. Um, you have to say that's his dog, yeah. I, I guess I gotta say a little baby, but if I get it, I mean, I might throw a little country on. But the, yeah, I was gonna the say, guys, your, on, your your rotation is different. Than yeah, the guys don't want to hear that. <laughs> Antoine Bancherel, let keep. Bruce, I was wondering if you had a chance to talk to Sekou and the opportunity that he has here. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Sekou's my dog, man. We was in Detroit together, so um, really close. Uh, talked to him when he was there and now here, so um. Talk to him, just tell him to be confident in his game, play his game, do what he has to do, and, and everything to take care of himself. Matt Brooks, Nuts Daily. Hey, Bruce, you've told us multiple times this summer that you've been working on your three point shot. How's that progression been going? It's going good. Uh, and I'm really confident in shooting the ball this year. Um, so um, I think it'll be, it'll be good this year for sure. Next question will be Bruce Beck, NBC New York. Joe, did the disappointment of the ending of last year linger with you? And are you more motivated than ever, both personally and on a team basis, to get back out there and, and pursue a championship? Yeah, definitely. Um, not ideal how uh, we ended last year um, for me individually, but then also collectively as a team, you know, coming back into this locker room was the first time that I've been been here since since we lost. So. Uh, a lot of memories coming back, thinking back to uh, the pain of, of all being in there together last season. But I think it's, it's like you said, it's motivated uh, myself and everybody else that's a part of this team. Um, you know, we have a, a hunger to come out and, you know, redeem ourselves and, you know, play longer than, than we did last season. You know, I, I, we're not shying away again from, you know, speaking about uh, having championship expectations, playing for a championship you know, we know what uh, the, the caliber of this team is capable uh, of doing. And so anything less, we'd be shortchanging ourselves. Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. Hey, hey Joe, you said it's a lot different than six years ago, obviously, around here. Um, you know, can, New York hasn't won a title in a, in a major sport for a while. And can you imagine, you had to kick in the idea a little bit that everyone's like, all right, the Nets can do it. Because six years ago, you guys were probably the last choice someone would have picked to, to end that drought. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
you know, New York is one of the greatest uh, sports markets in the world. Um, you know, you see the fans, whether it's for the Knicks, the Giants, the Jets, Mets, Yankees, us, um, whoever it might be, you know, the, the passion is certainly there. People love sports in, the, in this city. And uh, for us, you know, we're a little bit different just because, you know, we're a transplant team from Jersey coming into the, to the city. Um, coming into Brooklyn in 2012 and then like you said not having sort of the championship expectations and really being sort of a bottom feeder for for a while but for us to get to this point and kind of create the the fan base that we've had and had the the community um, sort of rally around us you know it would still be a special moment moment for for Brooklyn and New York City in general. Brian Lewis New York Post. That's a really good answer Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I wanted to follow up. I mean, you talked about how disappointing uh, the end of last season was as a team and also specifically yourself. I mean, obviously, you you personally got beat up a lot on social media after that playoffs. I'm yeah. curious, but you're not really you're not really that active on social media. I mean, did that help you at all in moving past it because, you know, you weren't going down that rabbit hole on social media or does that not really play a role in how long it took you to kind of move past that and get over it? Yeah, I mean, uh, even though I don't have social media, it still does mean that, you know, my mom, my mom and my sisters beat me up pretty good after, after that series. So, you know, I don't really need to go on Instagram to hear it from anybody. Um, but that's just, that's just the way it is. I think even over the course of the season, you could, you're going to have bad spells. People will probably be pretty tough on you. But that's, you know. I mean, I'm a fan too. I mean, I, I watch the Seahawks games and I catch myself, you know, getting pissed off at, at the DBs when they make mistakes. And you forget that, you know, they're humans at the end of the day. Like mistakes are bound to happen at some point. Um, but, you know, for me personally, uh, I don't really get caught up too much um, in, in a lot of that stuff, whether it's good or bad. I really just try and focus on, on doing my job doing it the best that I can. And, you know, I know that I'm capable of playing better than, than what I showed um, at the end of last, last postseason. We'll go to Zoom for the next question. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, what's going on, Joe? What's up, Bruce? Good to see you both, even if it's on Zoom. Um, Joe, kind of following up <clears throat> on what you were just talking about, does, does your offseason preparation change at all, given the way last season ended, or is it just keeping everything the same and uh, just knowing that the shots are going to fall next time? Yeah, my, my offseason preparation was very similar as it has been in years past. Um, I took a little bit more time off um, at the end of this season than I would in a normal normal season, but a lot of it had to do just physically trying to kind of recharge after having such a condensed season. Um, you know, we all played a lot of minutes, especially there uh, through um, that series with Milwaukee. We're definitely banged up, so it's good to take some time, just physically recharge. But then once the body felt good, um, I was back in here. Um, a lot of the same stuff that I've done in years past guys have kind of been in and out. Um, but we've had, you know, a lot of good run, good workouts here, especially for the last month, month and a half. Mark Sanchez, New York post. Hey guys, uh, Mark Sanchez with the post. Uh, we've been asking a lot of the guys about Kyrie, who's obviously not here. Um, do you guys have any concerns about whether he'll be, be able to play home games and, and have you guys talked with him about the vaccine? Bruce. <laughs> I have no concerns. Um, yeah, I don't have any concerns either. And then, um, no, I haven't talked to him about the vaccine. Back to Zoom, Chris Mulholland, Nets Daily. Hey, what's up? This question for Bruce. Obviously, Bruce, with your experience with Seku Demboya, what, what type of aspects of his game do you think could really benefit the squad? Uh, really, he's positionless too, also, um, as I am. Uh, he can play one through five, um, shoot the ball a little bit, uh, be a big in the, in the paint. Um, so really being positionless. That's all. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, cool. Bruce. Thank you.